An ex-AEW star has slammed stale-ass AEW shows. Plus, WWE is launching new TV and pay-per-view events, and a celebrity appearance has been teased for Crown Jewel on Saturday. It's all in the wrestling news right now. Joey Janela in the news today. Uh, a very divisive performer. There will be people who are already writing hilarious nicknames for him in the comments uh, when I mentioned his name. Now, he was praising online the work of Ray Phoenix and AR Fox on AEW Dark. Uh, but then in doing so, he gave his thoughts to the current state of AEW Dark. He said, this is what Dark should be, referring to Phoenix and Fox. All around competitive action-packed sprints and maybe a one longer type storyline based match every week. What that show does is nothing for anyone anymore. To be honest, it's stale ass. Squash matches do nothing for anyone in 2022, especially on a YouTube show. Your thoughts on Dark, Andrew? Um, I don't have many thoughts on Dark. Neither Tom, do I. Unfortunately. This is the problem. Yes, and, and as you were saying, yeah, I think that is very evidently the problem right there. Um, I think personally, I do think it's very nice for AEW to put on a, a wrestling show that's on YouTube, perhaps for people who can't who, who can't watch like the regular Dynamites or anything like that, who can't watch uh, WWE shows or wrestling shows in general. So to put out a free show like that on YouTube, I think that's a very nice thing to do. However, it doesn't feel consequential mm. to the overall sort of uh, canon of AEW. As they were saying here, maybe it would be nice if you had some storyline-based stuff in there as well. They have dabbled in that. I mean, Joey Janela was one of those that did dabble in that him mm. and Sonny Kiss had themselves a lights out match mm -hmm. on Dark, uh, which so they they have dabbled before. I believe mm. the Trustbusters were born through Dark, yeah, as a story there. But on the whole, it does the the general consensus is it's just a lot of sort of non consequential squash matches. But then I guess you, it's kind of like is it a, a catch twenty two sort of to put it that way in terms of. We talk about there being a lot of people on the AEW roster as it already is, and there's already a lot of wrestling to catch up on. If you add more stuff onto another one, mm. does it then get even more convoluted if you do that? Yeah, so like you really should be sort of focusing it a bit more intensely on those two TV shows. Mm. Uh, comparisons will be drawn with Dark and obviously WWE Main Event, yeah. which is a show where they do have sort of non-consequential matches and use it as a as a chance to get some people TV time. So there is something to be said for Dark being somewhere where someone can go and, and get their sea legs on AEW. Um, but in terms of how it's presented, it probably needs a little bit of a rethink. Mm. I don't know what the answer is, yeah. nor does Joey Janela, <laughs> but something probably should be thought about regarding AEW. EW Dark, yeah. it's a good point that's raised. Uh, WWE had their investors call yesterday. This comes following the quarter three earnings. Don't worry, we're not going to hit you with a, a bunch of numbers and stuff. It's fine. They're, the numbers go up as well as down. Um, <laughs> but there were some interesting conversations in there about premium live events, about television deals, uh, possibly some more hints that maybe uh, there's some big movement in the business world for WWE coming up. So we're going to go through some of those. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Paul Triple H Savek, Chief Financial Officer and Chief Administrative uh, Frank Riddick. That was your internet buffing, not my words <laughs> falling out. Uh, and the two CEOs of WWE, Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon on the calls. Now, uh, in terms of business and creative and talent, mm -hmm. what's been said, Andrew? So business notes, when it comes to monetizing the superstars, Stephanie said they are just getting started on future plans, including building moats around their character's IP. Literal moats? Literal moats. <laughs> you can't leave this island. They got a taste of Clash at the Castle and they were like, we need more of that. <laughs> we I need more moats. Moat. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie said, uh, sorry, Stephanie outlines ways WWE can grow in the future, including media rights, logo globalization, IP monetization, and interestingly as well as you've put here, mergers and acquisitions that align with core competencies. The last one is a reminder that WWE is still open for business should anyone want to come in and uh, offer to buy them. That line there about the, about the core competencies is, is interesting because it kind of says if somebody's up for buying us and we align with their yeah. beliefs, mm -hmm. their, as they put their core competences, that would maybe they still consider it. They've never, mm. they've never outwardly said that selling WWE selling WWE off is off the table. They've never outwardly said that. They've yeah. said it's not something. They Nick Carter said like we're actively, you know, we're not actively looking for it. But if somebody was to come along with an offer, Mickey Mouse was to burst into the yeah. door and go, "Hey, boy, I'll buy yeah. your wrestling." 
What, sorry, Mickey? <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of arthritis. <laughs> He has, uh, but it, they would consider it anyway. Creatively, creative what's the story? notes. So the team spoke about the success of the White Rabbit project as well, which saw a jump in social media engagement and merchandise sales. Levec says they will run similar projects in the future as well. He talks about long-term storytelling, explaining his team are already thinking beyond WrestleMania, which is very good to hear. Reassuring. He cited needle movers like Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes as part of their current success on TV. That's uh, also, we're getting Randy Orton in there. Obviously, him and, and uh, Riddle, RK Bro, I think they did big numbers for WWE and their merchandise sales. Him saying Randy Orton again. Um, mm. uh, hopefully, we see him back with a nice with a nice back. Yeah. Soon. A nice, a nice working <laughs> a nice back, back. Soon. That would be nice to see. Um, and talking about talent recruitment as well, NXT talent were released this week, as we all know. And Triple H spoke about their evaluation process for new talent, saying there's a six-month cut-off period. I think they've spoken about that in the past as well. Yeah. I think we've reported on that. Uh, Levesque discussed NXT Europe, saying it'll be similar to developmental in the US as a hub for younger athletes. He also said it's difficult to recruit prospects from the Indian wrestling market, but will be easier to do in Europe, helping them penetrate the Indian market further. Now let's talk uh, TV shows and premium live events. So Nick Khan takes the floor here. Uh, says the upcoming Royal Rumble in San Antonio is currently grossing a gate of in excess of $4.6 million, making Ooh. it the second highest Royal Rumble in history. I think it's wow. just passed it. Uh, they've already sold 100,000 tickets for the two-night WrestleMania next year, uh, which, which is, I, I believe that's on track. Last year, it was a bit nervy because they were like, we're going to sell these events twice now. Yeah. I think they're on track for doing that this year. Uh, now, to, uh, Nick Khan also spoke very highly of Clash at the Castle, saying that that was a massive success uh, for, on every optic for WWE. And they are close to closing a deal for another premium live event similar to that of Clash at the Castle. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be in Cardiff or in the UK at all, but it means they are uh, close to signing a, a bespoke deal for possibly a stadium event that takes over a city, mm. uh, which which they in a market that they don't normally run. So yeah. outside of America, very likely. There's a, there's a quite a few... There's quite a few places that we've heard mentioned, obviously with the rise of NXT Europe as well. There's something there. Of course, uh, they talked uh, about making inroads into India some more through NXT Europe. So it could be something on that market. There's one certainly to keep an eye on. It's not mm. specifically in the UK. Uh, Nick Khan also discussed uh, TV distribution deals in Australia, in the Caribbean, in the Sub-Saharan Africa area, and also with increased rights fees coming from all of those areas too. Uh, he was talking about how in 2024, all the TV, uh, a lot of the TV deals are up and they're big and quote bullish about their ambitions from mm. 2024. They're, so they're looking at how Amazon is doing a lot of live streaming of the NFL, uh, how it's like Fox and NBC are streaming the Big 12, seeing how these streaming platforms are getting more into live sports content and that's certainly an avenue they're thinking of going down. Amazon would be a huge one. Yeah. A the, huge Raw one. Raw and Smackdown on Amazon mm. doesn't is not a million miles uh, away from an idea. Wow. It's really not if they chose to. Uh, also pointing out when we're talking about these uh, different areas for TV deals, uh, he talks about uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa TV deal there where they are doing localized programming. A new WWE show will be launching in Nigeria next week. Mm. Uh, what we know is it's a talent search for WWE. Presumably wow. something akin to Tough Enough mm. or something where they'll be finding new faces within WWE uh, in Nigeria. So that starts next week. Uh, Nick Khan also said that WWE are developing a TV show for Netflix. Again, not a wrestling show, but this was a Spanish language comedy about an inspiring female, about an inspiring female wrestler. Wow. An aspiring female wrestler, I should say, uh, that will be debuting soon. So they're getting into more into that side of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I'm hoping it will be better than the Big Show show. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to mention that there. That was, that was rough, wasn't it? It I mean, was a little bit rough. I'm big and that's the joke. <laughs> Just, dude, that's got to be Kane as a sitcom. Jeez, we've got 28 episodes written already, Matthew Gregg and I. I'd love to see that. Get on that. Are you going to actually record any episodes? Like, I feel pitch, like you should. I'll pitch in with Netflix, I mate. feel like you should full on make these yourself a little bit. We'll just, you know? uh, look, Netflix, we're, we're, on the, we're on the phone. We're on the phone later. <laughs> now, WWE and Hulu are on better terms. You'll be pleased mm -hmm. to know. We spoke a few months ago that that deal looked like it was coming to an end. There was some uh, concern because they were making this bespoke 205 Live content for them. And then 205 Live ended and 
became NXT Level Up, and they're like, oh, what are we doing? Uh, but that deal seems, uh, they seem to be back on steady ground once again with those two. Uh, they've extended the deal to have uh, Hulu hosting Raw on a delay, uh, which will continue on for another year or so. But also, WWE Studios are making another new TV show. On top of all the other stuff that they're doing as well, another TV show from WWE. This one, an exclusive for Hulu, starring Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. Ooh. Could it be a reality follow you around camera think type thing? It'll be sort of like a Miz and Mrs. type of deal, I reckon. Mm. Sort of sure. Could. I wouldn't be. I'm not all against that though. Could be a sitcom. <laughs> That's gotta be the test. <laughs> It's gotta and be. they just rank wigs. <laughs> That's gotta be hair. If it is, if Bianca Bella and Montez Ford are doing a sitcom, which I doubt they are, yeah, cool. That's gotta be hair. Yes, I would like to audition to be their wacky neighbour. <laughs> Please, that would make me and Bianca Belair are already Eating friends. Chef Bayardi ravioli. Th looking over their fence. <laughs> I'd like that, please. Uh, Nick Khan says more A&E exclusive programming coming in 2023 as well. We've seen a few of those uh, documentary series that are beautifully put together oh, uh, so for A&E. And uh, we know that they're working uh, with the people from Dark Side of the Ring mm -hmm. on Tales of the Territories. So more content for A&E as well. Loads of new TV stuff for WWE. A lot of new TV yeah. stuff. And a really good way, though, to, as you know, as we talked about sort of... Um, global localization and everything like that just really getting out there that's such a good way of doing it people mm. love like the reality tv stuff don't they mm -hmm. we can all sit there and go oh my god reality tv's rubbish but we sit there and we binge it yeah. we binge it in doses fast so. food television all around yes. please uh, and uh, triple h also mentioned during the conference call talking about crown jewel this weekend now obviously there is uh there's there's some stuff that's coming out into the real world uh that is putting some question marks over crown jewel we're not going to talk about those here but of course, when something does kick off, you'll mm. know about it via coldaholic.com. We'll keep you posted. Uh, but Paul Levesque did throw to this Saturday talking about the, the show that's coming up, even teasing on the call that Jake Paul will be a part of Crown Jewel on Saturday. The brother of Logan Paul, a uh, YouTube star in his own right. It's every day, bro. Uh, he is, after having his fight mm. the week, he's expected to come over and he maybe be in Logan Paul's corner. <sighs> My pitch is slowly coming true, Tom, and I kind of oh. don't like it now. You did a pitch about this, did you say? I did do oh, a pitch about if, this. If only you'd filmed it and oh. put it on a YouTube channel, that'd have been really handy. That's funny enough, Tom, we actually did. Whoa! Nine pitches for WWE Crown Jewel 2022 out now on the channel. Please go and watch that. It was a fun time. If you do check out, they do nine pitches with these three because it's always good fun with Andrew, with Jack and with Ross. There's some good times to be had. It's on the podcast feed as well, including later today, uh, a conversation I had uh, with former Wickham Wanderers striker, Adebayo Akifenwa, right? The beast of, of British football, of English football. He's retired now. He's making his wrestling debut at the end of this month for Progress Wrestling. They think it's all over. I had a chat with Adebayo Akifenwa all about that. Uh, it turns out him and Triple H have been having a chat on the old text no. machine. Yeah, we talk about that. And, teletext. Yeah, on the old teletext. And uh, if you're a football fan as well as a wrestling fan, he picks his five, uh, himself as a four, I guess, and himself as the captain, for a football-based Survivor Series team. Ooh. So whoever you think of the toughest footballers in, in in the English, in the game, in the in the beautiful game of soccer, then maybe they'll match it with Adebayo Akifenwa, as you'll see on the podcast feed a bit later on. And of course, the latest wrestling news throughout the day, you'll find at Colt. Keys, keys. Love you, bye.